Hello, Module 10, Moments, Normality Tests and Outliers. So section 1 is about moments. We will discuss moments in this section. So remember how we have calculated the standard deviation. The first step is to calculate the mean so or the average. So the data set we calculate the average. The, the next step is each of these values you are subtracting with the average to form the second column. Uh, of the, the spreadsheet or the pen and paper, whatever you do that. Now these are nothing but deviations about the sample mean is the second column. Then the third column is you are squaring each of these deviations and then you are summing up, then you are dividing it with the degrees of freedom that is n minus 1 to get the variance and then you are taking the square root of this variance to get the standard deviation. So that is how we are doing the, uh, the standard deviation as well as the variance as you can see that. So in which there is a, the, the, the third step, what we did is that we squared the deviations about the standard, uh, about the sample uh, mean, you know. So that means that each of these values we are subtracted with the mean and then you are squaring it. So the squaring is an operation in which you are raising to the power of 2. So this is what you known as the moment, you know, the, this is the second moment because you are squaring it. The third moment means you are cubing it. So that is exactly what a moment is all about. So moments is defined as given a sample of observations y1, y2, y3, so on till yn of a variable capital Y. The rth sample moment about the mean m is defined as sigma y minus y bar to the power r divided by n. So it's an average of the you know uh, the the power r of the deviations about the sample mean. Remember moments are always based upon the sample mean never based upon the median. And also remember the the moment 1 or the first moment or m1 is always 0 you know that is how you are defining the mean you know. So uh, deviations about the sample mean if you sum it it is always 0. Odd numbered moments about the, the mean of the symmetric distribution will also be 0. So odd numbered in the sense that uh, to the power 1 or to the power 3 that is cubing or raising to the power of 5, 7, 9 so on and so forth. So all these are always 0 if the distribution is symmetrical. So in a way is the, if the distribution is symmetrical or not to check it you just raise to the power of an odd numbered uh, you know. Uh, moments and to see that will it actually sum up into 0 or not. So the, this is one example of the symmetric distribution. So you can see that all odd numbered uh, uh, the moments like first moment and third moment and fifth moment and uh, seventh moment these are actually summing up into 0. So had it been a left skewed distribution then definitely left or right skewed distribution this will not sum up only the first moment will sum up while third moment or fifth moment will not sum up to the 0. So this characteristic is used especially M2 is uh, used for calculating a very important test statistic that is called skewness. Skewness is the measure of uh, the skewness uh, or the you know uh, is it actually left skewed or the right skewed. It is a shape parameter of the probability distribution where the m the, where the mod is or where the tail is. So either the tail is extending to the right or extending to the left. So that is what the is measured. The symmetry of the distribution is measured by the, the, the test called skewness. So the skewness is calculated as uh, you know it is actually the uh, m2 divided by you know m4 to the power 3 by 2. So this is a formula that we use it to calculate the skewness. So uh, easy way to calculate the skewness in uh, Microsoft Excel is equal to skew S K E W. So that formula will return to you what a skewness is in uh, the uh, you know in the Microsoft Excel. So if the skewness is you know above zero that or the positive skewness that means that skewness is uh, skewed towards the right. So that means the tail is extending towards the right for the positive values of the skewness. If it is 0 that means perfectly symmetrical and if it is actually less than 0 that means negative skew. So that means that it is skewed towards the left you know. 
so that is what the skewness so right skew or left skew or perfectly symmetrical so all that you can see that by the skewness so you can see that the uh, in this particular uh, example the m3 is zero so therefore a3 is also of course zero so if you plug into it m2 divided by m3 to the power 2 by 3 so to the raise to the power 2 by 3 uh, you can do that in excel or if you have a log table you can easily do that one so if you calculate you are going to get the skewness of this data set so m3 is 7.98 for this data set while m2 is 10.91 so if you plug into that equation then you are going to get the skewness value is 0.21 but don't forget that negative symbol before that 0.21 so it is a negative skew, so skewed to the left is the inference of this skewness. In this figure you can see that there are uh, different kinds of distribution shapes, one is basically the skewed to the right, so the, the tail is extending to the right, so the, me, the you know that the peak is on towards the left, so this is the you know that is something called the positive skew, while negative skew means skewed towards the left while the central one is symmetric distribution. So depending upon the skewness, you are going to have uh, different kinds of distribution. You can infer the shape of the distribution by the skewness parameter alone. So if the skewness is less than, point, uh, uh, less than 1, minus 1 or the greater than plus 1, then the distribution is uh, highly skewed. So you can say that the distribution is highly skewed. So these numbers can be taken as a threshold values for the skewness. If the skewness is between minus 1 and 0.5, minus 0.5 or between plus 0.5 and plus 1, then the distribution is moderately skewed. You know, you cannot say that it is highly skewed, but still it is moderately skewed. So if the skewness is between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5, then the distribution is approximately symmetrical. So the tolerance amount is usually minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. So this is one example here, you can see that you can calculate the skewness. So if you do that, uh, if you calculate the skewness, then the skewness is a positive skew. So positive skew means skewed towards the right, that means the tail is extending to the right side. And as the skewness is between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5, so if you are getting like 0.1, approximately symmetric, so that should be your conclusion about it. Coming next is kurtosis. So kurtosis is the fourth moment about the mean is involved in the characterization of the flatness or the peakedness of the distribution. Remember it is about the peak or flat. So that is what is being measured by this term called kurtosis. So for the normal kurtosis, uh, you know distribution the kurtosis is going to be just 3 while for uh, the population, uh, you know there are actually the, the two kinds of formula that you can use for the kurtosis either for the population kurtosis or the sample kurtosis. So uh, as you see that in the case of uh, population kurtosis is just n while in the case of sample kurtosis it is actually n uh, uh, multiplied by n plus 1 multiplied by n minus 1 divided by n minus 2 multiplied by n minus 3. So it is a little bit tricky, bit complicated but still you can simply substitute to this formula uh, to calculate uh, the, the skewness. So the, the second part of the formula is that it is uh, simple the fourth moment you know uh, divided by the second moment squared. So that is what the, the, the kurtosis formula is all about. So uh, in Excel to calculate the kurtosis the formula in Excel is equal to KURT kurt. you can uh, that returns the kurtosis of the, the data set. So interpretation is straightforward if the K is kurtosis is 3 that means it is mesocutic that means it is perfectly normal the, the, the shape is just fine you know so the mesocutic means bell shaped or normal distribution right and if the K is the kurtosis is greater than 3 so that means that it is leptocutic that means it is peak you know. Uh, uh, with the light tail. So the peak distribution means the variance is very low that is what it means and uh, now the, if the k the kurtosis is less than 3 then that means that the distribution is platycurtic. Platycurtic means flat tail so the tails is a bit thicker and uh, it is not really peak you know. So that means that there is a lot of variability in your data set so that is what the shape conveys so the kurtosis you can interpret it. 
So as you can see in this diagram, there are three different kinds of shapes. So you know the mesocortic, then leptocortic and then the platycortic. So leptocortic as well as platycortic means they are not really bell shaped while the mesocortic is bell shaped. So in the case of Excel, the formula used is little bit different. So Excel reports the excess kurtosis. So the, the real kurtosis subtracted with 3 is the excess kurtosis. So in the Excel, the interpretation is almost straightforward just like the skewness. So if it is 0, that means it is uh, you know mesocortic. So it is bell shaped while if it is positive, that is uh, you know uh, plus uh, values positive integer then that means that it is uh, basically leptocortic while negative value means that it is basically platycortic. So that is what uh, this kurtosis is all about. A normal distribution has kurtosis exactly 3 while the excess kurtosis is 0. While I already explained to you these terms platycortic and uh, you know the, the leptocortic and mesocortic. So what does these terms mean? Uh, you should know these terms very well. So excess kurtosis is between minus 2 and minus you know plus 2. So if this is between minus 2 and plus 2, then it is acceptable level of kurtosis as per uh, the statistician you know. So it is something like a threshold value. So in the case of skewness, I told you the threshold value is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5. But in the case of kurtosis, the excess kurtosis value uh, minus 2 to plus 2, then it is uh, kind of acceptable uh, kurtosis value. So there is a, a simple rule of thumb. So for the example, you can calculate kurtosis for this data set. This is a screenshot from uh, Microsoft Excel and in this screenshot, you can see that the formula you so one, uh, you know, I clicked um, purposefully, I clicked on to that cell where I added the formula. So on the top, you can see the formula that is equal to Kurt, you know. So the conclusion here it is that it's negative kurtosis. That means that the distribution is platycortic. So kurtosis is less than minus two. So distribution seems not normal. So all these things. So if it is negative or positive, that you have to see that. And then, so how much is the rate of the kurtosis? So it depends upon that. You can say that is it significant or not significant. So in this data set, you can calculate the kurtosis manually. So to calculate that, you have to calculate the fourth moment and the second moment. Then simply substitute into that formula, you know. Then uh, in this formula, we have used the population for the sake of brevity because it's just n. Had it been the sample, then it is not the n multiplier, it is a bit more complicated. Then you are going to get the kurtosis is 2.5, which indicates definitely it's not a normal distribution, you see, it's definitely it's a skewed distribution. So you can actually do this one for the other set as well. So you can make inferences So different kinds of distributions. I suggest you to test the kurtosis with the distribution that you have in your hand and make inferences about the kurtosis of the data set. But a word of caution is that the skewness and kurtosis are highly dependent on the sample size that is n. So n need to be more than 3000 to infer meaningful conclusions. So uh, perhaps if your sample size is less than 3000, then neither uh, skewness nor the kurtosis conveys any meaningful information. Here is a statement by a very famous statistician. So the statement here is that in short, the skewness and kurtosis are practically worthless. You know, so Schwartz made this observation in his first book, the statistics for the skewness and kurtosis simply do not provide any useful information beyond what is already been given by the measures of location and dispersion. So probably the best option is that simply, uh, you know, draw uh, one histogram and try to interpret is it actually, uh, you know, normal or not normal. So the best option is that uh, a better approach will be to do a formal normality test like omnibus K2 normality test. So in summary, moments are some of the deviations about the sample mean raised to the respective powers. Second moment is used to calculate variance as well as standard deviation while or the, the third moment is used to calculate the skewness. Fourth moment used to calculate the kurtosis. Odd numbered moments about the mean like M1, M3, M5, etc. of the symmetric distributions are always zero. Therefore, a convenient way to check whether the distribution of the data set in question is symmetric or not is by calculating the odd numbered moments. Skewness is calculated from the third moment and second moment. 
you know a skewness of 0 indicates symmetric distribution. A rule of thumb is that if the skewness is less than minus 1 or the greater than plus 1 then the distribution is highly skewed. If the skewness is between minus 1 and minus 0 0.5 or between plus 0 0.5 and plus 1, so then the distribution is moderately skewed. So acceptable skewness level is minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 approximately symmetric. Kurtosis is calculated from the fourth moment and the second moment. A kurtosis of 0 indicates normal distribution. So this is what I am saying is about the excess kurtosis calculated in the, the Excel or the real kurtosis needs to be 3 to call it as mesocurtic or normal distribution or the bell shaped uh, distribution. Excess kurtosis between minus 2 and plus 2 are considered acceptable in order to prove the normal univariate distribution. So these are the threshold values. Skewness and kurtosis are highly dependent on the sample size that is n need to be more than 3000 uh, for uh, to infer any meaningful conclusions from uh, these uh, the terms of kurtosis and skewness. I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, let us go to the next session uh, that where we, we will discuss about the normality. Thank you.